Well, it's Friday, November the 8th, here at the cabin. Uh, I got here actually last night. It was dark most of the trip up here, so I didn't do any filming. I left uh, town later than I anticipated because I was having some issues with my furnace in town which may or may not have been resolved so we'll see how that goes but uh, anyway so it's Friday tomorrow is the start of deer season Stephen will be up later after work and Tom is coming up a little later this afternoon so right now it's just uh, Kira and I here from last night and today. Of course, she's doing what she does mostly, is just chew on sticks and run around and smell things. And, and uh, I'm trying to work a little bit more with her to get her to come when I call, but it's a slow process when you're a puppy and there's all these uh, neat things to check out. That's more exciting than coming when your owner calls, I guess. As you can see, we have just a light dusting here on the ground. Which, when we get out to the stands in the morning, um, be able to see, you know, a few tracks see some buck scrapes maybe a little easier or that I was texting with Joe this morning and they were out yesterday and saw some deer sign and some wolf sign so we might be uh, competing with the wolves in our area for uh, some of the deer but that's the way nature works and I don't have a problem with that I got a few chores done got uh, all my gear kinda organized although there's still a few more things to do to get ready for tomorrow when I got here last night, inside the cabin it was 20 degrees and it was actually four below zero here. That was about, oh, close to 6.30. It clouded up a little bit during the night so it was only zero this morning when I got up. And it took most of the night to, you know, get the cabin heated up real good and that so it's gonna be a little bit chilly a little nippy on the deer stand tomorrow and with the puppy I'm gonna have to probably spend a little less time out in the woods than I normally would because I don't think she can stay in the crate all that long and I don't let her loose in the cabin because being a puppy I mean she gets bored quickly and there might be all sorts of fun little things to chew on play with tear apart so when nobody's around she has to be in the crate yet Ludo will be coming up tonight with Steven so uh, there will be another dog here, but he, being an older dog, doesn't really want to spend much time with the puppy. Although they get along okay, but uh, Ludo's not her play toy like she thinks he is, or is supposed to be. As you can see, the lake is covered with ice, although there may be a few cracks yet because it looks like a little bit of water probably on the surface over there but uh, 
Sometime from two weeks ago when I was last here uh, until last night, the lake froze over, probably within the last week, because uh, it got quite chilly up here uh, the last few days. We'll try and be out in our stands by, oh, six o'clock. Somewhere's in there, I suppose, a little after six. I know some people go out way early in the dark to get set up before light. We tend not to do that. I mean, we try and get there about the time. It's a few minutes before legal shooting, but uh, I guess most years I've never seen anything uh, real early like that anyway, so. Uh, we tend to go out just a little bit later and then you don't freeze quite so quickly. So the challenge will be getting enough clothes but not so much that you get all heated up on your walk to your stands. But uh, I've done it for, what, 54 years, 55 years, something like that. It'll be good to get out there, spend a little time in the woods. Well, it's opening morning of the 2019 deer season. It's about 8.30 in the morning. We had about a half an inch of fresh snow last night. There were a couple of sets of fresh tracks on the way in this morning, but haven't seen anything. <clears throat> and only, I think I've heard four shots way off in the distance, different times this morning. <clears throat> My friends just showed up. I did bring some cheap bread, so maybe I'll have to uh, give them a little treat since not seeing the deer. I see about four Canadian Jays in the area, so anyway, uh, like I say, it's the start of the season, and hopefully somebody will at least see something. I just stood up in my stand to stretch my legs a little bit. Off to the right, I saw this fox coming and, well, you just saw a little bit of the video. It come actually right underneath and right in front of my stand and then it saw me and took off. But man, what a beautiful animal. His fur was just gorgeous. It was the end of day one. We're getting the grill fired up. The dogs are out playing in the fresh snow. We're firing up the camp chef. Gonna do some tenderloin, some venison tenderloin from last year. Three Three wolves were sighted today by one of the uh, other people that hunt in the area. So the wolves are out and active and on the road system, on the trails, getting back. So we'll always watch out for that and hopefully we don't see them, which means they won't be in our area scaring our, our deer away. But if we do see them, hopefully we can at least get them on camera because they are they are something to see, so 
anyway, we'll let the dogs play out a bit longer as the grill heats up and Dad's got the sauna going, so we're getting dinner ready, get cleaned up and probably hit the beds early. Well, dinner the first night. Tom made a nice salad that we're finishing up. Some potatoes in the instant pot. And then the grill, we had uh, one piece of beef steak in the back there and then some venison tenderloins from last season and some other loins. So we won't finish all of that tonight, but at least we got it cooked and can eat it for some leftovers. The dogs are lounging and hoping for scraps and Kira gets the prison so that she isn't bugging everybody while we're eating. So pretty good end to the first day. Well, we wanted to show you some of the pictures we got from the game cams. So this is a buck that showed up at Dad's stand and shortly after a, uh, a doe showed up. And there you can see that six pointer a little bit easier with the sun not in the background. And then <clears throat> this is uh, the clearing stand. We can see the six pointer. I think it's the same one from before, but got some pictures of him grunting, I think. And then a couple hours later, there was a nice little doe that showed up. So you can see her staring at the camera, and then she looks like she starts bleeding a little bit. So that's kind of some cool shots. And so this is uh, Tom's stand, and the dates aren't correct on there, but he had a couple of does that showed up. And then interestingly, we had a bear that that uh, popped up this year. So you can see him there uh, in a couple of the shots. So that was kind of cool to see. That was a couple of weeks ago, I think. So we had some cool animals show up, and, and uh, we'll kind of keep plugging in some of the photos as they uh, come in during the season. Well, we're back from day two of hunting. It was somewhat of a chilly day, a little bit windy, and temperatures dropped. Gorgeous day out, sunny, but for whatever reason, nothing was moving. So, no deer seen, barely a fresh track around. So, we came in a little bit earlier to let the puppy out, and I don't know that we'll go back out this afternoon at all since uh, it seems like nothing much wants to move around. Well, this is Tuesday, the fourth day of hunting season. We had 16 below zero this morning at the cabin. Yesterday I saw three deer across the swamp here in this direction that the video is shooting now. It was a doe and two yearlings, just to got a little glimpse of them in the brush across the swamp. That's the only thing we've seen so far in any of our party. This morning walking up there was fresh tracks here by my stand here in front. But last night was, I think, night before full moon so it was real bright so I think a lot of deer were moving during the night but maybe with this cold something will want to go for a walkabout and maybe somebody will see a buck this morning I usually bring out some cheap bread and feed the Canadian Jays but this morning getting ready I left my bag on the cabin table with my sandwich and the bread for the birds so I'll hear out of luck this morning. You can see them all puffing up with this cold here.
This is the friendliest one of the Canadian Jay-Z. It's the one that takes stuff out of my hand. But I left the bread back in the cabin, so I don't have anything to offer him today, but he's buzzing me now. Looking for his treats. So I guess he'll have to wait till tomorrow. Well, it's 12.30ish now. And this morning at 4.30 when I got up, as I mentioned a little earlier, in the, on the deer stand it was 16 below zero. Now we've made it all the way up to... What is that? Maybe three or four degrees. So that's still 20 degrees warmer than what it was this morning, but uh, it's still chilly. But this is supposed to be the coolest day. And now the next week and a half should warm up. It might still be a little bit below normal or close to normal. So now 20 or 30 degrees is going to feel like a heat wave after the last few days. Dogs always seem to go to the sun spot. Both here at the cabin and at home. The sun is coming through on the skylight. Some and the window, but tears hanging out there, enjoying the sun and the wood stove. And there's Ludo in his favorite spot. Stephen had to go back to work for a couple days, he'll be up tomorrow night, Wednesday night. But uh, we just kept Ludo here since it probably made more sense rather than haul him around. He'd just be by himself at the house while Stephen was at work. Of course, he's by himself with Kira here when we go out in the woods. But he enjoys it up here. He's a pretty mellow dog and spends most of his time now just chilling out, laying here by the wood stove. So even though it's only four above, with the sun hitting the south side of the cabin here, the metal roof, uh, you can see the icicles forming and maybe you can see some of the drips too coming off now at again 1230. So it's still not warm out, but when that sun hits just right, uh, it's got a lot of power to heat things up. And like I say, it's all melting off the, the roof on the south side. So between some heat from the cabin and then the sun, uh, the icicles are getting longer. Old six point buck. That was about 7 a.m. And I decided to let him go. I actually want to be able to hunt some more, be out in the woods when Stephen gets back here. And I know up here, if you see a legal buck, you should probably decide to try and harvest it, because you may not see another one. But since I enjoy being out in the woods, I decided I would just let that guy go and we'll see what more of the season brings. But it's awesome to be able to see some deer once in a while and get a little video. It wasn't much, they're hard to find when you're searching for them in the trees like that. Looking at a little viewfinder and when you don't have your glasses on it's even harder.
Today is Thursday. It was eight above this morning. Stephen got here last night. Tom left for a few days to do some other things. So we switched up. Today I'm in the stand that Tom's been sitting in just so he can get a different view of things. Steven went back to my stand and these are Tom's birds that I'm feeding. There's one real friendly one which you see feeding out of my hand. The others are not quite so much. So this stand last year had two bucks harvested out of it. So far this year it's been a lot less deer in this area. So whether there's less deer, whether they're not using this, or we've seen wolf tracks in the area too, they might have moved the deer out a little bit. But it's a comfortable stand, and we'll see if uh, either Stephen and I come up with anything today. So I just saw that timber wolf, which I got a little bit of video of, and again I apologize for a little bit of shaky. Uh, I happen to see him heading up the trail and then he cut across the woods here in front of me and I uh, tried to get on him and I got some so trying to zoom in a little bit and get a little closer picture and try and follow him in the woods but I got a little bit of him and I anticipate uh, <laughs> probably not seeing any deer now that the wolves are circling the stand here so but you never know they might bust something loose that's laying down and send them this way too so we'll keep an eye on it see if he or any more of the pack shows up in the area well this was the same day as the timber wolf and I was walking out from the stand for the day and I looked off to my left as I was crossing the swamp and saw a brown spot that I looked that I thought looked a little bit odd and put the scope up to it and realized it was a deer but it was a doe and all I had was my cell phone so I took that out and shot some video and here you can see uh, there was a couple more that showed up behind her there in the left on this video and so it was two adult doe and and uh, probably a yearling fawn or so, but um, they didn't really seem to mind me. I was only about 25 yards away from them, and she was stomping her feet at me a couple of times, which I got in some clips, but they weren't the greatest. So I uh, kind of sat and watched them for a while, and then I went off and, and sat and uh, tried to see if I couldn't call in a buck for a bit. Nothing showed up, so ended up calling it a day but it was still cool to see them and be that close to them and, and them not really mind all that much. When we looked at the game cam footage later, we caught the three of them after they left from here. And they actually went back towards the clearing stand. And uh, so we saw them on, on the game cam there, as you can see. Uh, it's Friday. I moved to another stand, in what we call a cutting. Since yesterday I saw the timber wolf over on Tom's stand. Decided to try a different spot. Stephen went back to my stand again. And he ran into a fresh track just past where I walk into this stand. So there wasn't a lot of sign here but 
Um, we have a trail camera here. I'll pull that card when we get done today. Put in a new one and see if anything's been coming by. I mean, it didn't look too promising in the snow when we walked in, even for old tracks, but um, this is potentially a decent stand, so we'll see how uh, it goes. Yesterday, Stephen saw those three does in the swamp on his way out. So back on my stand, I think that makes eight deer we've seen there. And the one buck, like I mentioned, that I passed on and that there's a little bit of video on. Today it was eight degrees this morning and there's a kind of a mild breeze. It actually calmed down during the night. It was really gusting last night. So uh, Anyway, we give it another try this morning. Well, we're getting to hang some of last year's animals. So this is the deer that I got up here at the cabin. This was November 7th of last year. And then the caribou that I got in Alaska for a draw tag. So we're hanging, uh, hanging that one as well. We typically put the little tags just as a reminder of when and where and who. So when we look back on them, it triggers our memory a bit. So we'll get the, the two of those put up today and add to the cabin ambiance. Well, Dad's out there chainsawing some brush. It wouldn't be a cabin trip if uh, if Dad didn't get the chainsaw out and trim something up. So he's finishing up some of the small stuff. Eventually, we're gonna have to trim up and cut up this balsam that blew down, and then. Some of the standing birch is not doing so hot. So there's a couple of them that will need to come down. But slowly but surely cleaning things up. And then eventually we'll put oh some type of a tree back in here. We're not entirely sure yet what we'll put, but I don't know, maybe some some sort of fruit trees if there's anything that could handle you know handle the temperature ranges just something that won't grow too terribly tall and potentially fall down and and crush things well he's still going at it I figured I would 
build a little fire and that way when he takes a break or the dogs come out whatsoever we can uh, can all keep a little bit warmer anyway when we're by the fire but he's in his happy place right now chainsaw in hand so here's a picture of the dogs in their favorite position even though Ludo doesn't uh, often tolerate having Kira around when they're tired and laying on the couch she doesn't seem to mind when she flops next to him or puts her head on him or whatever as long as they're snoozing so I know a lot of people don't really care for dogs up on the furniture but I mean it's it's the cabin and there are pets and so we've elected to uh, let them do that and that's just the way it is here at the Living North cabin so they're pooped out and uh, getting a little R&R &R. but I'm sure if we uh, said let's go they'd be up and at them <laughs> <laughs>